So I think today will be our last on this series of what you are filled with. And we will study that. What are you filled with? What are you filled with? All right. <clears throat> so last time when we studied about, we spent some time in Ephesians chapter 5. We studied a lot about it. We studied about being filled with the Holy Spirit, <clears throat> not with alcohol, not with wine, but with the Holy Spirit. And then we saw those who are filled by the Holy Spirit of God. We, we saw that as a husband, as a wife, uh, and as a Christian, how you know that you are filled. And we saw that a spiritual Christian is a worshipping Christian, singing Christian, a grateful Christian, giving thanks. Then we saw it's submissive Christian, submitting one to another. Anyway, today we will look into Philippians chapter 1 verse number 11. Philippians chapter 1, verse number 11. So in verse number 10, it says that he may approve things that are excellent, that he may be sincere and without offense till the day of Christ. Being filled, verse number 11, Philippians chapter 1. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness, which are by Jesus Christ, unto the glory and praise of God. But I would, e should understand, brethren, that the things which happened unto me have fallen out rather unto the furtherance of the gospel. So that my bonds in Christ are manifest in all the palace and in all other places. Filled with the fruits of righteousness. Okay? Fruits of righteousness. So what is the fruit of righteousness? <coughs> we get our righteousness from whom? From Jesus Christ. So when you as a sinner, okay, as a sinner, when we as a sinner, we look unto Christ, what happens? Our sin is imputed upon Christ. Hmm? And Christ's righteousness is imputed upon as what is righteous? What is Christ's righteousness? Sinless, holy, justified. I will explain this. Hmm? So, sinless means when you become a Christian, your soul, your spirit, does not sin because it has the seed of God. I'll show you that. Better to show you. Take one John. <coughs> I 
<clears throat> Where is that verse? Verse number 8, chapter 3. Verse number 8, chapter 3. Your body sins. Your flesh sins. sins. Look at verse number 7. Uh, let's read from verse number 5. Any... Okay, verse 4. Chapter 3. 1 John. <coughs> Whosoever committed sin transgresseth also the law. For sin is transgression of the laws. Tomorrow somebody asks you, what is sin? Sin is what? Transgression of the law. Right? God's commandments and we are disobeying God's commandment. Crossing the mark, crossing the boundary what God has drawn is sin. So transgression of the law is sin. Whosoever abideth in him, look at that, whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. So if we have a constant abiding relationship, and then what I mean, like yesterday we talked about being filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, when I'm filled with the Holy Spirit, I'm able to see Christ. Not as, as an individual standing before us, as God, but able to see God's presence. Because when we look at a poor person or somebody in need, if I am filled with the Holy Spirit, I will be able to, able to discern whether this person I should help or not. Now, there can be a drunkard who can come and say, I am Christ, please help me. You'll, it's wrong for you to give money to a drunkard fellow. He'll go and drink again, isn't it? I remember many years back, I was walking in the streets of Mapsa Market. Somehow one fellow found me out and he came running to me. He says, are you Pastor Lordson? I said, yeah, yeah. Oh, God told me to ask you for 35 rupees right now. I really need 35 rupees. I don't know why exactly 35, but God told me, that I should ask you for 35 rupees. I said, I'm sorry, God did not tell me. This guy was high and I could smell the alcohol in his, this. So I know, with 35 rupees you can get urak, no? <laughs> huh? So he wanted alcohol. And I said, God did not tell me. And I did not give him. But there are many people that you feel in your spirit, that you really, really need to help those people. And when you are spirit filled, when you are walking with the Lord, you are able to discern from the person that you want to help and the person that you should not help. Like I have stopped giving money to the ladies with the children in the traffic in Porvarim, in Mapsa, in Panjim. I totally stopped because it's a big mafia in Goa right now. You know and most of the time it is not their children, it's not their child. It's somebody else's child, either kidnapped, picked up from somewhere. And the woman's, they beg, whole day they beg. And most of the time you'll see the child is sleeping. Why? That lady has given alcohol to the child when she came to do the business of begging. So the child is given alcohol. So the child sleeps for eight hours without disturbing the lady. So she, the child is always sleeping. She goes around car to car, place to place takes money, afternoon she gets a lunch, night she gets a lunch, the whole money goes to these mafia guys. If you will watch, if you have time and if you see some beggars begging, if you have watch, if you have time, stand there and notice the lady for a few minutes. The lady will not stand in front of you, she will try to move away. You take a camera, otherwise she will move away, she will run away. Or you will also notice there is another guy standing on somewhere, keeping an eye on this woman. It's a big mafia thing that's happening in Goa. Hmm? So, you have to be, because most of the, the, the child is not taken care of, the child is given alcohol. So you got to be very careful, you need to ask God for wisdom. Most of the money is going for terrorism or for kidnapping and all these dirty works. And we got to be careful. 
verse number six whosoever abideth in him so abiding in christ when we are abiding in christ we are able to discern what is right and what is wrong we are able to and so abiding whoso abideth means continue continual present continuous so i am continuing in abiding in christ christ is the vine we are the branches and if we are not connected <coughs> what happen we will not bear fruits and god wants us to abide in him and if we abide in him we will have the conviction of the holy spirit if we sin we will repent or at least we will try to escape from sin whosoever abided in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth has not seen him neither known him that's what he says if you willfully knowingly on and on and on the same thing sin 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 and there's no conviction he says you you actually don't know you don't know god you we can do a lot of spiritual things religious thing but we may not know god if we continue in our sinful without convictions <clears throat> little children let no man deceive you now why is he writing little children is not writing to the children in the nursery is writing to you and me he is saying little children because he is almost 90 years old remember that he is a old old apostle and he is calling all of us as little children little children let no man deceive you because the ones that will deceive you is man satan will come in that manner because satan is not going to come with horns and tails he is going to come as a very attractive person remember that in the garden it was an attractive person speaking sweetly to eve whosoever abideth in him sinneth not whosoever sinneth has not seen him not neither known him little children let no man deceive you so that means what i should do how can i not let somebody deceive me can you tell me let no man deceive you what may, what does that mean think about it let no one let no man deceive you so if i don't want to allow any man deceive me what i must do to that man judge i need to judge every man every woman every preaching i should judge is it biblical the devil hates this word and that's the reason why today's majority is don't judge don't judge the preaching just believe that's what the devil wants and god says don't be deceived let no man deceive you so if i am not going to allow anyone to deceive me i need to judge whether what he is saying is right or wrong right without judging you cannot discern and that's why modern day christianity is taught wrongly by modern day preachers don't judge don't judge don't and and by just by that you understand this is not of god this is of the devil and majority is always wrong remember that majority did not enter into the noah's ark it will be surprising that majority are not in heaven majority are in hell so let's not go through the flow of the numbers of majority <coughs> sorry little children let no man deceive you he that doeth righteousness is righteous even as he is righteous he that committed sin is of the what is the next word devil for the devil sinneth from the beginning 
For this purpose the Son of God was manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. Whosoever is born of God, that's born again. Whosoever is born of God does not commit sin. For his seed remaineth in him. And he cannot sin. Because he is born of God. So what is born of God? Is my flesh born of God? Is my spirit born of God? My spirit born of God and my spirit does not sin. Because the seed of God is in my spirit. Hmm? So now come to Philippians chapter 1. Verse number 11. Being filled with the fruits of righteousness. So I get my righteousness from whom? From Jesus Christ. And because of that I have the seed of Christ in me. So my spirit does not sin because you are of God. You are of God. Now, the struggle is the flesh, right? When you feed it, you will fall, you will swell, you will... It depends upon what you feed, where you feed. If you feed your spirit, your spirit will prosper. If you feed your flesh, your flesh will prosper. So we have to starve. We have to starve the flesh. So how do I starve? <clears throat> Basically, what you allow through your eyes affects your brain. And that's why we sin. We watch, we read, and then it affects my eyes. It goes to my brain, and that's what we do, we sin. And so what I have to do, I have to starve. Starve what? Avoid. Avoid feeding your flesh. So what is, your, what is that you are feeding? So that you have to cut it off. Starve. So your flesh becomes, does not sin. You understanding? Hmm? Like for example, Mm, I don't know. I don't, you know what's? What do you call in Konkani for what's? You know sometimes that thing comes black color in some part of the body. Samke. Huh? Samke. Samke? Okay, so that. Now, you know the ladies will tell you if you tie it with a hair, right? If you tie it with a hair, after a few days what will happen? It will fall by itself. Why? No blood supply. You are starving that place from feeding the blood to that what? To that samke or whatever, whatever it is. And then it dries off and then it falls by itself. That's what God is speaking about. You need to stop the supply of the lust into your eyes and brain to your flesh. You have to starve it. And God has given us a righteousness and that's why our spirit is sinless. But our flesh, if we don't starve it, we will continue in the sin. And then a day will come where you're like, I don't know, I look like the worldly person. We continue and that's why it's so difficult to find out whether uh, this person is truly a Christian or is a worldly person, unbeliever, because they are doing the same thing. They are living, it becomes a lifestyle. It becomes a lifestyle. And then, holy. Jesus is holy. Hmm? 
So holy is again sanctified from where the word comes saint. God cleanses and forgives all our sins by his blood. Sanctified. Then what is justified means? Justified means, remember this word, when you read the book of <coughs> Romans, you come across this word a lot. Justified. Justification. It simply means, when you trusted Jesus Christ, God the Father looked at you and said that you are justified, which means you have never committed any sin. That's what God looks at you and says. So God justifies me, God declaring you and me as if we have never committed sin. Now that is the mercy of God. And that's called justification. So here there is a dual imputation. Imputation means what? Imputation means God pouring his righteousness in us. And our sin taken on Christ. Yes, and he died on the cross. Imputation. You know when you travel by train? How many of you? All of you travel by train? At least once? Yeah? So in the train, no? That guy comes. What? Or who comes? Chai wala. <laughs> he does that chai chai very nice, right? <laughs> so the chai guy come and he pours the hot water. The white hot water. And he gives you a tea bag. And the tea bag, you put it in the cup with the hot water. And then what happened? The taste and the color comes. That's called imputation. Alright? So Christ comes in me and he gives me color and he gives me taste. He gives you righteousness. He gives you color and taste. And so that's what Christ does to your life. So what are the fruit? So when this happens, then what comes up? Fruits comes out. You will be able to identify that this person is righteous. This person is saved. This person is born again. How do I identify? How do I identify? Take to Galatians chapter 5. <clears throat> and look at verse number 22 Galatians chapter 5 verse number 22 says what but the fruit of the capital S right isn't it but the fruit of the spirit Galatians chapter 5, verse 22. But the fruit of the Spirit is what? Love. Okay. Love. Then? Sorry? Joy. Peace. long suffering you know what a people who are filled with the Holy Spirit they be able to suffer they'll say I know God has done many great things in my life and now my flesh is weak I'm suffering but I'm willing to do this for Christ there are people when they are in bed on the sick no more complaining they just suffer. Then, gentleness. gentleness. Then, goodness. goodness. Faith. What? Faith. Meekness. Meekness. Temperance. 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 Temperance? Huh? Yeah, nine, right? Fruition.
We are the fruit of the Spirit. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. You are never wrong when you have this in your bucket of life. Temperance is getting angry and controlling your temper. Long suffering is willing to endure. <clears throat> Look at that in verse 24. That's called starving, right? Just now we spoke about, and they that are Christ have crucified. The word that I used is starve, have crucified the flesh. With the affections and lusts. If we live in the spirit, let us also walk in the spirit. Okay, our spirit is saved, so we need to walk in the spirit. Let us not be desirous of vain glory, <coughs> provoking one another and being one another. So when you read from verse number, 17 or 16 onwards you see the fruit of the flesh but God wants you and me to have the fruit of the spirit that is the fruit of righteousness which is found in the Christian's life hmm? now look at Colossians chapter 1 Verse number 9. <clears throat> Someone read. For this cause we also. For this cause we also. Since the day we heard it. Mm. Do not cease to pray for you. Mm. And to desire that he might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Yes. Wow, what a great prayer, isn't it? Praying for others. Apostle Paul is writing, When we came to know that you became a Christian, you became a child of God, we started praying that you will be filled by the will of God. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you. And to desire that he might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Knowing the will of God is the greatest knowledge in this world. Finding the will of God is the greatest discovery in this world. Doing the will of God is the greatest accomplishment in this world. Remember that. Knowing the will of God is the greatest knowledge in the world. Finding the will of God is the greatest discovery in the world. And doing the will of God is the greatest accomplishment in the world. So knowing God's will, how will I know God's will if I walk with Him? If I continually abide and if I read God's word? I met somebody recently. <laughs> that was the funniest thing. I just did my exercise and I was all sweaty and um, I took early morning I went to buy eggs for breakfast so I took Stephen with me he was awake so I went down to the Royal Foods to buy eggs and there one found one man saw me because I was wearing this t-shirt grace and truth Baptist shirt <clears throat> this man came to me and he said, uh, Praise the Lord. I said, Praise the Lord. 
And then he shook hand with me, so I gave him the gospel tract. And he looked back and he's, he says, are you Pastor Lordson? I said, yeah. I'm sorry, I said, I'm all sweaty and with the t-shirts, you know. I just came from exercise. Oh, I've been watching your videos and this and that. I'm great and I like your teaching, this and that. You see, a lot of people like my teaching, but they don't want to come to church. <laughs> oh, I've watched your message and your videos, you know. And then he says, oh, yeah, you had this problem with these guys, you know, this, that pastor, this pastor, and you have video. I say, yeah, yeah. And then he told me, Pastor, very nice what you're doing, huh? but uh, just, you know, he said, um, I'm not a theologian, I don't know doctrines, but uh, I just want to suggest that, it's, you know, we don't have to fight, just win souls. Now, that was my first, you know, meeting with this guy. <laughs> and I didn't want to break my first impression itself. But I was like, man, you don't know doctrines, you don't know theology, and you thought that you can uh, give me uh, suggestions right now, what I should do? He confesses he doesn't know theology, he doesn't know doctrines, but he's telling me now, we don't have to fight. We just win souls. I wanted to know how much souls he's been winning. Suggestions are so easy and free advice, free advice. If you don't fight, if you don't fight, the church will lose. The church of Christ will have no impact. You have to fight apostasy. You have to fight false prophets, false teachers. You have to stand up and hold the beacon up there. And even if nobody follows you, you know Christ is with you. You have to fight. You should not give up. Hmm? So, so, knowing the will of God, how you come to know the will of God? What is God's will? Am I supposed to fight against, well, not, I'm not supposed to simply use that as my only ministry, only fighting, <laughs> but we have to fight. The Bible says, fight the good fight of faith. What does that mean? Keep the purity. Attack that which is false. You have to fight the false. You know the Bible says beware of dogs. <laughs> hmm? Take Philippians. You know today people put that in the... People say King James Bible is so difficult but they all have one in front of the gate, right? Well, uh, look at chapter 3. Today you stand and you call somebody as dog, a false prophet as a dog. Arre, this Pastor Lordson does not have love in his heart. Hmm? Look, verse number 2. Chapter 3, verse number 2. Beware of dogs. Beware of evil workers. Who are dogs? Evil workers. Beware of the concession. Dividers of the church are called concessions. Those who divide the church. Those who hurt the church. And Paul is saying, under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, beware of, he's not talking about the street dogs or dogs in somebody's house. He's speaking about false teachers. And people have taken and made a board out of it and put it on their gate. <laughs> beware of dogs. I got false teacher in my house. <laughs> <clears throat> beware of dogs, beware of evil workers, beware of concessions. Which is the dangerous dog? What is the dangerous dog? What is it? Rottweiler. I think we should say beware of Rottweilers. If we have dogs, we should put that on our door now. Because <laughs> otherwise, it will be like, Ah, oh, Vernal Sikara is living here. <laughs> Aslith is living here. Dominic is living here. <laughs> uh, Benny Hinn is living here. 
साउथ अफ्रीका बुशेरी वट एपन ओके अल्फ लुका इज लिविंग यर एट वन एम एल एवेंट टू साउथ अफ्रीका इज इंडेड वाग he went to him you know he was not well so they if the family took him to ulf ulf lukau hmm because that guy made a big joke brought a man who was working in a carpenter shop his name is whitfield or something george uh, his name is some whitfield and paid him some money and told him to act like a dead body <laughs> put him in a coffin with a white dress made a joke out of it <coughs> showed the whole world that he was dead and alf lukau made him come back to life the next day the the owner is saying the the guy saw the video this guy the one who is pretending to be dead is working in a company for a carpenter shop okay the owner sees the video and he calls this guy yesterday you were here what are you doing there <laughs> huh so he went there and pretended for some money and uh, he made a big uh, this out of it but people never learn people still go there and so this guy goes there the family takes there they cry it's there on the youtube they cry they could have just asked god asked jesus christ and let the lord de- de- decide but they went and took him to south africa to this guy nothing happened no healing no feeling only billing <laughs> lot of bills unfortunately said this man died the wife was shattered the children were shattered with pain and brokenness said hmm beware of dogs beware of evil workers beware of concessions there is another dog no rottweiler is this is another dog that's banned in india but it's still there in punjab i think it's like big face you know short no 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 it's short ah pitbull that is also dangerous isn't it pitbull no yeah pitbull it's it's the short like this and big face no 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 not boxer i think it's pitbull like it catch it it is banned but still people have it people have it there are about eight dogs that are banned in india <laughs> but they still have it so banned on papers <laughs> so anyway beware of dogs beware of evil workers beware of concession so the lord tells us you got to be careful so how will i know only if i read god's word <coughs> because that's god's will that i should be aware of the dogs and concessions and evil workers god's will i need to find out in god's will whom i should marry whom i should not marry what do i do with my money i find out in god's word what career i choose i find out in god's word it's all in the word of god what do i do after my studies find out in god's word hmm what do i do with my friends find out in god's word that's the will of god look at our first thessalonian chapter 5 <clears throat> verse number 16 Look at verse number twelve onwards, and we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labour among you. So basically, those who teach the word of God to you, those who preach the word of God to you, <clears throat> and we beseech you, brethren, to know them which labour among you and are over you in the Lord and admonish you. So what do I do to pastors and teachers and elders and and uh, evangelists? What do I do? 
the Bible says, and to esteem them very highly in love for their work's sake and be at peace among yourself because the devil will always bring negative thoughts and confusion in the mind and put some negative thoughts against or anger against the preacher or the devil always wants to because when that happens and your prayer life gets affected and God says no 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 be at peace be at peace and the Bible says now we exhort you brethren warn them that how can you warn if you don't judge how can you warn if you don't discern now we exhort you brethren warn them that are so warn means judge right <laughs> another word isn't it warn them that are unruly comfort the feeble minded support the weak be patient toward all men See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men, even to unbelievers. Rejoice evermore. Pray without ceasing. In everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. This is God's will. Quench not the spirit. Don't make the spirit grieve or don't walk in the flesh. When you walk in the flesh and you are not in the spirit. Quench means what? Th you know you are thirsty and you drink the water. Then the thirst is gone. But God expects you and me as a Christian that we should be always thirsty for, for the Holy Spirit. If you're not thirsty, you're not seeking the Holy Spirit, then you'll be dry stream. Don't be dry. Quench not the Spirit. That's the Holy Spirit. Verse 20, despise not prophesying. Don't stop preaching the Word of God. Don't stop teaching the Word of God. Don't stop serving. Don't stop praying and fasting. This is all prophesying according to God's Word. Don't stop singing. Don't stop playing music. You know that playing music is also prophesying? Hmm? When Saul was having the evil spirit, who was called to play? David was called to play. And the Bible says, And David prophesied with his harp before King Saul. And the evil spirit left him. So playing music... Everyone in whatever we are, you know, serving. Book of um, Acts, when you read, this guy had seven virgins. Philip, right? Had seven virgins and they prophesied according to the word of God. So what they were doing? It doesn't say they were going and telling about future. They were serving, cooking and cleaning and serve, helping the apostles. In the Bible, when you read the book of Luke, we read what? And are the prophetess in the temple, isn't it? How was she prophesying? Fasting and praying. That's what the Bible says. She was fasting and she was praying. Hmm? Prophecy is not simply standing and telling about the future. That's one part. Preaching is prophesying. Teaching is prophesying. Singing is prophesying. Serving is prophesying. That's why we expect every Christian, whatever you do, do it 100% for the Lord because it is prophesying. It is a service unto God. It's worship. Despise not prophesying. Then prove all things. Which means judge all things. Prove all things. Hold fast. When hold strong. Hold fast that which is good. Judge everything and that which is good, hold on to that. Abstain from all appearance of evil and the very God of peace. When you do that, what happens? You will have peace with God. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray God your whole spirit and your and soul and body be preserved blameless 
unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Turn to Romans chapter 12. Romans chapter 12. If you obey and do God's revealed will, God will reveal unto you that which is not known to you. Remember that always. Simple. What do I do? I don't know the will of God. Then what is mentioned, then do that. That which is mentioned, do it. Very clearly where God's word says, this is God's will. If we obey those things, the things that we don't know, when we don't, when we want to know but we don't know, God will speak to us and lead us and guide us in the right will of God. Look at that. Romans chapter 12. <clears throat> I beseech you therefore, brethren, by the mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy, acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. That's your will. That's God's will. It's your reasonable service that you present your bodies to God. And be not confirmed to this world. Don't confirm yourself to the world, to your friends, worldly friends. Don't be worldly. Don't be confirmed to this world. But be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. We try to reason things with our mind unnecessarily and try to conform to the world. But God's word says, no, 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 no. You believe in God's word, you change your mind through God's word and do what God's word is, God's favor will come upon you in a mighty way. And be not confirmed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind that ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So these are God's will. So when we obey God's revealed will in the scripture, then when we don't know certain things, God will always make known to us those things which we do not know. So Paul's prayer for these Colossian Christians was that they will understand God's will. They will know God's will. So come back to Colossians chapter 1. We'll read one more time and finish it here. Colossians chapter 1 verse number 9. For this cause we also, since the day we heard it, do not cease to pray for you and to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will. Knowledge is where you need to know it, in your mind, in your heart. And where you get that knowledge? From God's word. Okay, so they cease not to pray. For you to desire that ye might be filled with the knowledge of his will and not only know but also have wisdom. What is wisdom? You may know the will of God. But wisdom is knowing how to use the will of God. Sometimes we have knowledge. But if you don't know where to use, when to use, that is because lack of wisdom. You may have knowledge and God says, don't throw your pearl to the swine. We are supposed to soul winners, isn't it? I'm supposed to preach the gospel to everybody. But there are times that you should not. And this is not an excuse for it to be lazy. But there are times where you should not give the gospel to certain people because they may be making mockery of Christ. So God, God Jesus says, don't throw the pearl at the, swine, uh, at the swine, they will trample under their feet. And that's wisdom. If a person is willing to listen, share with them. If a person only want to mock, no use. They're making a mockery of Christ. So that's wisdom. And spiritual understandings. Understanding the person's spiritual thing. Understanding the word of God, spiritual things. And you read God's word and like, wow, I can get it. Understanding God's word, okay, this is what, I read it so many times but I didn't know. This is what God's word says. So that's understanding. 
but this comes how by prayer <coughs> I should pray for myself I should pray for you you should pray for yourself you should pray for others pray that others will know the will of God pray that others will have wisdom they will also have an understanding of the spiritual things this is what you and I should pray for one another and I'm, I'm sure if we pray for one another for this cause our church will be a bright beacon light hmm? may the Lord add many more blessing as you he continue to study uh, next when we come we'll talk about God's finger okay the finger of God very very important hmm? you have a question what is salvation? Oh, all right. <clears throat> what is salvation? Salvation is a gift of God. Salvation is the forgiveness of our sin. Salvation is redemption from hell. Redemption means God bringing you out of hell looks like a mice right hmm. so salvation is God's gift he gives it you cannot earn with your good works you cannot earn by your riches you cannot earn by whatever it is something only God can give it to you salvation is God forgiving your sin not by water not by anything else but by the blood of Christ hmm? salvation is redemption from hell God snatching you out of hell you are on the way to hell if you die you'll go to hell with if you die in sin you'll go to hell so what Christ does he gives you a gift and snatches you out of hell and takes you to heaven now this is what salvation is now how do I get that salvation how do I get that salvation first and foremost you need to understand you are a sinner you're a sinner and because of sin you're going to you're going to hell and if you go to hell you will burn eternally why you are going to hell? Not because God wants you to go to hell. You will go to hell because you rejected the salvation of Christ. You rejected Jesus Christ when you could. So, that's why you go to hell. Because the choice men make. People make the choice to reject Jesus Christ. And people make the choice to go to hell. So you are a sinner. If you die in sin, you will go to hell, you will burn, and, but you will be conscious over there. It's not that you are dead and finished. You will be conscious, you will feel. It's a terrible torment. Okay? Take Luke chapter 19. Um, chapter 16 <coughs> Luke chapter 16 I'm not going to say the whole story one fellow died went to hell the rich man went to hell most of the time the rich man thinks hey, is fine right but this fellow rich man went to hell and the poor man went to heaven because the poor man always called upon God the rich man goes to hell. But look what is happening in, in hell. Verse number 22. 
But it came to pass that the beggar died and was carried by the angels into Abraham's bosom. The rich man also died and was buried. Verse number 23. So who is in hell now? Look at that verse number 23. And in hell. After getting buried with a great big funeral. Thousands of people came for his funeral. He went to hell and in hell. What he did? Huh? He left up. It's not that he's burned and fried up. He opens his eyes in hell. He can see it. He's conscious. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, painful burn. He's tormented. Oh, God is so wicked, man. No, God is not wicked. God says, don't go, don't go, don't go. Man is wicked for rejecting God and going there. No one should blame God for this. And in hell he lift up his eyes, being in torments, and he seeth Abraham afar off. He can recognize from hell, people can recognize each other. Now, Abraham is not in hell. Abraham is outside hell. It's Abraham's bosom where the Old Testament prophets, Old Testament saints went there. Now look at this. And Lazarus in his bosom. And he cried. And he cried. Consciousness. He is having feelings. He can feel it. Emotions. And he cried and what? Next word? He said, which means you can speak. Tongue functions, mouth functions, brain functions. And he said, Father Abraham. So Father Abraham, this guy is the son of Abraham, which means coming from the Jewish line. Just because your father is a Christian or your mother is a Christian, your pastor is your, or your uncle is a Christian, auntie is a Christian, does not mean you are a Christian. For you to go to heaven and, reach, and escape hell, you have to be the child of God. This guy calls Father Abraham, but he is in hell. Hmm? <coughs> Father Abraham, have mercy on me. See, in hell, everybody is calling for mercy. On earth, when God said, hey, get saved, man, God said, they were making a mockery of God. Have mercy on me and send Lazarus, that he may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my... Feeling thirsty in hell, but no water in hell. Just imagine. You play football. When you play football and you are thirsty, what happens? What do you do when you are thirsty? You eat cake. You drink water. What if you don't get water? It's struggle, right? It is suffering. Imagine this guy is in hell. And he is having no water. He is asking for a drop of water with the tip of his finger. No water. That's hell. Horrible. That's why we should be soul winning. That's why we should be passing out gospel tracts wherever we go. That's why we should tell people about Christ. He may dip the tip of his finger in water and cool my tongue. Why? For I am tormented in this flame. That's what is happening in hell. He's tormented in hell. So you must understand you are a sinner. You'll go to hell. You don't have to go there. You need to understand God is giving a free gift. He's giving you forgiveness of sin. Is giving you redemption from hell. So you can do nothing for your salvation. Only God can do that for you. So what did God do for you? All you can do is, because you are a sinner, you can go to hell. But to save you from hell, to forgive you from sin, redeem you from hell, and give you this gift, only God can give that to you. So what did God do? This is what God did.
You know what God did? God became man. God became man. John chapter 1. <clears throat> he became flesh. God was manifest in the flesh. Hmm? So who is that? That is Jesus. Jesus is God. God became man. And you know what Jesus did? He came into this world, lived a sinless perfect life. He took your sins. upon him he took our sins upon him and on the cross he shed his blood and he died on the cross for my sins hmm? and then on the third day he rose again This is the good news that he rose again and he shed his blood so by his blood he can forgive my sins. He died so he can give you his life. <coughs> hmm? God became man so man can become the sons of God. Understanding? God became man. That's Jesus Christ. So what Jesus did? He became man. He took my sins upon him. He shed his blood on the cross and died on the cross for my sins. He shed his blood for my sins. And he died on the cross for my sins. On the third day, when he was buried, let's put that, he was buried... And on the third day, he rose again. So this is the gospel. This is the message of salvation. When you understand this, you know what you need to do? You need to repent. How do I repent? When I believe this truth, honestly if I believe, if you believe, the Holy Spirit will give you repentance. God will give you repentance. So what is repentance? Repentance means having a hatredness for my sins. Knowing that the devil cannot save me, the world cannot save me, my beliefs cannot save me. So I turn away from that and I turn to Jesus Christ. My religion cannot save me. My parents cannot save me. My good works will not save me. My, my philosophy does not save me. The devil cannot save me. So what I do? I turn to Jesus Christ for salvation. It's turning away. Turning of your mind and turning of the direction. From one person to another. You turn away from the devil... And you turn to Jesus Christ. Turn away from relig religion to a relationship with Jesus Christ. So I turn away. 
who says, I hate my sins. I'm sorry, O God, for my sins. I know that I'm a sinner. Now I turn to you. Please forgive my sins. I believe that you became a man for me. I believe you took my sins upon you. I believe you shed his, your blood for my sins. I believe you died on the cross for me. You were buried and on the third day you rose again. I believe with all my heart. Lord, I turn towards you for salvation. When you believe and you call upon God and say, Lord, I believe, the Lord says, I will save you. So when you turn to Jesus Christ and call upon him and tell him you believe this, and that is how you get saved. That is how you become the child of God. That is salvation. Salvation is escaping from devil's family and coming into God's family. And this is only through Jesus Christ. So you understand that Jesus is God. He died for your sins. He shed his blood. He was buried. On the third day he rose again. When you understand that, you say, Lord Jesus, I believe. I want to follow you. I want to believe you. I want to be saved. I don't want to go to hell. I want to go to heaven. I want my sins forgiven. When you tell God, He will forgive your sins. He will receive you. He'll make you His child. He will be your God. That is what will happen. Hmm? All right. <clears throat> Good question. Let's pray. <clears throat>